access, the type of policing that you are subjected to will change. So you will be over policed. Um, and that's just one of the concerns that it's done. Um, Mr. Chairman, just a quick follow-up. I don't see Richard anything Warren. in this that allows more database on that. Am I wrong? <coughs> Why is, is well, that, does this allow a lot um, more? So, Mr. Chairman, Representative Mullery, what's happened is, is we're conflating GameNet with what this is. GameNet doesn't exist anymore. One of the problems with GameNet was that people were over -pleased. There are. If you want to get into the concern about the, the police gathering data, that's a whole other conversation. I, I don't, you know, that goes into privacy and, and the power of the police and everything like that. I don't think we have time to go into that today, but it certainly is a concern. But it's a very broad philosophical type of thing. Um, and I can't answer you concisely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fuck. Thank you. Hey, uh, my name is Dan Fight. And uh, I have a really, really <coughs> important handout, and it needs to be seen by everybody on this committee. Oh, sure. Mr. Fight, Mr. Fight, you are Mr. Fight, and must go to the chair. Mr. Fight, you will listen to the chairman of this committee, or you will be escorted out of this room. Okay, Mr. Chair. I am giving you an opportunity to speak and testify, but you will listen to what I have to say, and you will follow what the chair directs, or you will not have that ability. Uh, Mr. Chair, as, as a taxpayer and a citizen and a participant in public policy, as well as somebody who worked covering issues at the state legislature for four years, I have to show an example of the type of data which we may not be able to have access to, which uh, in this particular case uh, shows, for example, uh, through data discovery, um, how essentially how local police were discussing how uh, illegal government operations could be ensured and how protesters could be expected to sue. And I also have examples here, uh, which I handed out, which made it halfway across the committee, of uh, the uh, Homeland Security uh, critical infrastructure tracking of uh, Occupy Wall Street. And um, in, uh, excuse me. Uh, and uh, I think that's very important because uh, that document is an example of uh, tracking of an organization that I'm affiliated with. And so I think uh, the topic of critical infrastructure is a pivotally important, and we need to have an open discussion on that. And I also want to add, I uh, tried to, you know, closely observe the uh, the SF twenty seven twenty five work group. Um, it was pretty frustrating because uh, every, all the members of the work group were, you know, over the age of forty, I think, at least over the age of thirty five. And so, uh, outside people that weren't one of those groups only got five minutes as individuals to testify. Uh, when there are so many different uh, important issues to bear, um, it's just very troubling that the policy making uh, latitude keeps decreasing. And uh, I think that's very important to consider. So, um, and I'm sorry about the drama, but oh, why can't I have any handouts today? Mr. Fight, is that an opportunity? Rule? Yes, Mr. Fight, it has to go through the chair. And you may approach any member when this committee is over and give them any information that you would like to give them. Yeah, the, and the reality, simply put, is it's only a tiny example. There are really hundreds of pages of pertinent material that, that ought to be looked at, and this is just uh, one simple sampling, but I think it's really uh, it's really important that you know we look carefully at these things to try to have an open process. Um, so, uh, what you know, one of the major things which has been troubling about the different iterations of this bill is that it does lower the bar for criminal predicates. A uh, reasonable possibility can mean essentially anything, uh, which is in a police officer's imagination. So, for example, if a police officer imagines, well, this person could commit civil disobedience in the future, that's a crime. And so uh, all of their personal life is totally fair game, and uh, it's very troubling. Like uh, it's troubling. That it's like I'm one of the people that a lot of people tend to come to to, to say, like, look, I'm being spied on. I'm being like shadowed. Like uh, I set up a chat channel uh, for Occupy Wall Street when it, when it started, um, and uh, the FBI sent uh, Sabu, this lulzet guy, to lurk in my channel. So that kind of targeting is incredibly troubling in the lack of uh, systemic predicates um, and transparency in the whole system is just, it's really quite troubling. So, um, it, 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 the problem is that it makes it acceptable for uh, law enforcement to build permanent dossiers on people if they believe that they will engage in civil disobedience. Um, that appears to be the text of the bill, and um, I, I don't believe that's a good idea. I think that uh, the overall trend in the last decade has been a certain expansion of 
the intelligence system over the formal political system. And so the idea of defining critical infrastructure um, as something which uh, any opposition to critical infrastructure, which are basically large, usually fairly powerful private businesses, um, the modeling of that as a quasi-terrorist type of thing um, is very dangerous, I think, to our whole civilization because it means that we don't evolve. Like the opposition to critical infrastructure might be necessary. Like there might be a coal power plant that people want to protest, and you know a lot of people believe coal is really damaging. And so to say that that's critical infrastructure, that uh, anybody opposed to that coal could not, you know. Um, be allowed to do that without being tracked by the police, and then having that intelligence specifically pass to the owners of the coal plant um, is, a, is a very troubling development that I think will really harm the uh, forward evolution of our whole society. Um, and uh, also, uh, a really prominent member of Minnesota law enforcement, I, I asked them, um, you know, does this mean that critical infrastructure is supposed to last forever? And they said yes, and that's impossible. And and so I, that's the kind of troubling assumption that's really uh, baked into this whole system. And so part of the reason, well, one of the things I've been involved with, and I am only speaking for myself, not anybody else, but one of the things I've been involved with is the Occupy Wall Street protests, which started on September 17th. And part of the reason that that enormous protest resonated well across the country and here in Minnesota is because a decade of fusion center development has not made it uh, more difficult for the financial industry to commit crimes. Like the, the targeting of fusion centers is very directed toward people that oppose critical infrastructure, uh, oppose large business practices. It, it isn't really uh, directed at powerful people. And uh, that's an incredibly troubling pattern. I mean, somebody told me that they were followed from the Capitol yesterday in photographs. And we don't know. It could have been somebody working for the banks. It could have been the police. But the idea that that becomes more secret under this bill, that there's less transparency, is incredibly troubling. I know that somebody else was tailed home from work within the last 10 days in Hennepin County. And so I don't know if that was, uh, could be Minneapolis police, could be feds, it could be the sheriff's people, I'm not sure. But I think that this bill will reclassify that activity. And so, I mean, were you, did you have any uh, classified data in the last two weeks? Like, in terms of data collection? collection? I'm just, you know, it's, it's important, it's relevant to this bill that should be talked about. So, the, the closed process of 2725, the, the, the fact that these processes are becoming so closed and, and the auditing is so closed is incredibly troubling. Another thing, too, um, is that it doesn't deal with when governments do illegal things or it has a faulty assumption that governments outside jurisdictions are always totally lawful. And I mean, my grandfather, being in this fight, was this, you know, in the legislature for more than 20 years. And he understood that other states could sometimes be corrupt with a, you know, Tammany Hall machine. They're the Taft Hartley machine, for example. And, uh, you know, so there's a real troubling assumption that governments are always trustworthy. And I don't think that's uh, valid. Also, um, it's becoming really difficult to travel into Canada. Canada has access to a lot of different files through these data sharing systems. And the more data that's retained by the state, the more difficult it is to travel into Canada. So we have a free trade agreement, but we don't actually have free travel anymore. And I think that's really bad. So it's bigger than just the United States. North America is actually becoming apparently a control grid. And that's really troubling. So I think the intelligence system is really taking over the formal political process and the election system. I would ask you, how many do you think you're going to be watched before your, elect you know, before your election be shadowed by law enforcement, and will you be able to get data discovery to see that that's happening? So I know that that happens on a routine way, like without predicates outside of their jurisdictions, and that's not going to be transparent under bills like this. Um, I think that's really quite troubling. And so also another thing too is that by allowing law enforcement to keep permanent dossiers on people, um, especially if they think, oh, under a reasonable possibility you might commit a crime, in the future. Um, that helps law enforcement find psychological hooks to control people, to turn them into informants, to affect what they're doing in political organizations. And I, mean, I know for a fact that that's already happening like right now, like day to day, week to week. Like I hear about it directly. And so the idea that that be expanded is troubling. Um, 
And I also think, you know, uh, so much of this data stuff involves really large Microsoft Access database systems. And, you know, generally speaking, I should point out Microsoft software is not usually secure, that you can get into Microsoft Access databases uh, without logging if you just don't use the, the client application that you're supposed to use. Um, so um, so the issue with fight. software design is your fight in all of this. Is your fight? Two, two quick points. No, no. Okay, I need to know how much you get on to 10 minutes. Okay, make sure you're talking to the bill. So I, I think it also says uh, projects must not interfere with politics. Like there's this whole notion of projects, like intelligence projects. And, and I, I think that um, there's, you know, there's troubling aspects there because that doesn't mean that they can't collect information on politics. It just says that they're not supposed to interfere. And uh, I, that just doesn't seem narrowly tailored enough. So it's, there's really a, a, an evolution of a closed policy system, an evolution of an authoritarian system. And uh, it goes across the left right spectrum. If you, if you stick out, if you say anything critical of critical infrastructure owners, the, the gates are wide open. And uh, it's incredibly troubling. And I just please beg of everybody to have an open process to not just have little panels like SF2725 and to you know make sure that we you are still just using the Minnesota Data Practices Act to find out how illegal government operations are structured. So that's it roughly. I'd love to have a discussion about that stuff. And I mean if anybody thinks that the system's been working great, that like you know the federal government is good at dealing with financial crime, raise your hand right now. Does anybody think the federal government's good at dealing with financial crime? Anybody? That's not a lot of confidence in the room, guys. That's the problem. That's that's right at the heart of this. So, like, it's troubling stuff. It's really terrifying. Thank you. Be right on the phone lines of the Skinner Paul. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Fight. Uh, Representative Cornish, would you like to uh, move the bill? Yeah, I would like to renew my motion, only to change the motion to House File 2470 to be passed to the Civil Law Committee without recommendation. Okay, Representative Cornish. Moves that uh, we refer this to civil law without recommendation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. The ayes have it. You, you didn't offer the member the chance to ask me any questions. You didn't ask. Mr. Fight, I have got there are no members that ask questions. You certainly have the ability to discuss it with any member after this committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. The uh, testifiers to the next bill will come to the table and the author.